Good morning and Merry Christmas. Please join us in singing Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Welcome to St. Paul. It's great to have you worship with us this morning from home. I hope that each and every one of you had a glorious Christmas and were able to get some quality time with family. This year has been very different, a di different experience for many of us compared to last year because we can be with more of our family members and for that we are grateful. Our mission project for December is the traditional Christmas Eve offering that we collect for Wellroot, which is formerly the United Methodist Children's Home. You can still donate online uh, or write Wellroot in your checks memo line. All of your contributions that are going to count towards 2021 must be received in the church office by 10 a.m. this Thursday, December 30th, in order to be credited to the current tax year. Since New Year's Day falls on Saturday, Friday is the official holiday, so the banks will not be open. We have temporarily suspended in-person worship and Sunday school uh, because of the rising COVID numbers um, in Cobb County, and we will keep you informed about how that plays out for the future. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, light of Christ, awaken us this hour to the glory of your presence in our midst. Shine among us in such a way that the darkness without and within may be pushed back so that we might truly see what is real. Help us to recognize our sin for what it is. Enable us to behold the world as you created it to be, as you created us to be. Empower us to move from darkness to light, from sin to new life. May your light within us shine through into worship this day as all days. This we pray in the name of the word made flesh, the light which is the light of all people, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join us in singing Heart the Herald Angel Sing.
Let's join our voices together in the Apostles' Creed, our historic confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. singing while shepherds watch their flocks and away in a manger. Welcome to that of Tricia. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship this day after Christmas. I certainly hope that you found your Christmas Eve to be holy and bright. And I hope that your Christmas Day celebration was exactly the same. Uh, filled with light, filled with love filled with laughter. Whether you enjoyed this Christmas Day celebration in your own home or you were gathered with family and friends, God was surely present wherever you found yourself celebrating. Could we go to God this morning in prayer? Holy God, we have spent weeks anticipating the birth of your son. We can hardly believe that it has arrived and come and gone so quickly. But Lord, always remind us that your presence does not just come and go in a day's time, but it remains with us each day and every day, seeking to light our path, to bring healing and wholeness and light and life, not just to us, but to the whole world. And Lord, that knowledge makes our hearts see. And so it is indeed with full hearts that we lift up this prayer your son taught us to pray. As we say, 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And uh, holy God, we return these, our tithes, our offerings, our hands, our hearts, our voices to you. Lord, we ask that you bless them and bless us always to you, to your service, spreading the good news that Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, didn't know who you were. Didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. Our eyes was blind. We couldn't see, we didn't know who you were. Long time ago, you were born, born in a manger low, sweet little Jesus boy, the world treats you me. Treats me mean too, but that's how things is done down here. We didn't know who you First scripture today comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 52 verses 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices, together they sing for joy. For in plain sight, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together in singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has re redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of God for the people of God. And our response is, thanks, thanks be to God. God. On Christmas Eve, as we listened again to the story of Christ's birth, I found myself thinking about those individuals who were present at that first Christmas. The angels whose voices filled the night sky. The surprised shepherds who left their flocks to go see this event in Bethlehem in person. The weary parents 
who surely were wondering what this baby's birth means. Even the gift-bearing magi, who technically didn't arrive that night, they actually arrived weeks or months later, but for the sake of today's discussion, we'll include them. What was the morning after Christmas like? For each one of them. You know, I suspect that each of them discovered that the Christmas story was far from over, and each one of them became these mighty storytellers. The angels' magnificent impromptu cantata ringing with joy and praise it didn't end as they returned to heaven. And those ordinary shepherds, they were so excited, they couldn't stop talking about what they had witnessed. And not just the morning after, but every day after, Mary and Joseph continued to ponder on this godchild of theirs. And after seeing the new baby king, those magi realized that their lives would never be the same, so much so that they chose to return home by another route to avoid the current king, Herod, so that their story could continue to live and be told. And yet, look at us today. Here we are on the morning after, December 26. Christmas Day has come and gone, and we act as if Christ's birth has no impact on us or on our world. <coughs> Is that the kind of response that we need to have to the most significant moment this world has ever seen? Why, none of those who first encountered the Christ child were unmoved or silent. And so, why are we? In our first scripture, the prophet Isaiah proclaimed, How beautiful are the feet of the messenger who announces peace brings good news, bearing salvation, telling all that your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices and together they sing for joy. So break forth together in singing before the eyes of all the nations. And then all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. And in our second scripture today, we will hear words urging much the same. For we will read that John was a witness to this light that has come into our world. And now his sole mission is to testify to that light, to testify to Jesus. You know, if you think about that, we probably should call him John the Witness instead of John the Baptist. So let's listen as we read from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. And what has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now, there was a man sent from God 
whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, and yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all those who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, Children who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, and our response is, Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Folks, what we have seen, what we have experienced in Christmas, it's the greatest story ever told. And so how can we possibly be silent? Even though it is the morning after, this story is far from over. Christmas is this concrete demonstration of God's great love for us. Christmas is about God Almighty himself taking on flesh to become one of us, to live among us. Christmas is about God proclaiming to all creation that there is nothing I won't do. There is no place I won't go. There is nothing I wouldn't give so that you might once again live enveloped in my light and life and love. Christmas is about God sending Jesus the living word once again into the world filled with light and life coming straight into our darkness and chaos. Christmas is about God's Son showing us how we were really meant to live, full of life, full of hope, full of joy. The existence that we were always meant to share. Christmas is about Jesus becoming the bridge between God and us so that we might once more dwell in him and he in us. Christmas is about God's glory poured upon us so that we in turn might allow his presence to shine forth from us to others. Christmas is about the fact that the incarnation experience where God lives in human flesh doesn't end with Jesus. For in Christmas, he is the light that you and I now walk in, and the darkness cannot overcome it. He is the hope that sustains us, even when every other voice tells us to just give up. He is the peace that keeps us centered in the middle of all of life's turmoil. He is the joy that makes new life blossom and grow in our here and now. 
The love of the Christmas story that we gather to tell year after year is a new story still unfolding day after day, year after year, even today. And folks, every time this story is told, suddenly through the darkness comes a ray of light. A tiny ray of light which brightens and broadens until the land is flooded with sunshine. And then on the winds of this radiant dawn, it carries the sound of our singing to the corners of the world. Folks, just like all of those witnesses to Jesus that first Christmas, we too have the task and the privilege to announce it to those still in darkness. Just like those angels and those shepherds and those wise men. And then later, even John the Baptist, we too are to become reflectors of that light to a dark world. And now we are called to be the light of the world. <laughs> Today may be the morning after, but Christmas is far from over. Instead, the work of Christmas has just begun. Jim Strathdy wrote a song entitled, I Am the Light of the World. And its first verse goes like this. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the shepherds have found their way home, the work of Christmas is begun. Now, as beautiful as that song is, um, it's actually based on a poem written by Howard Thurman. And that poem is called The Work of Christmas. Now, the poem has a lot more detail, so I'd like us to listen to Thurman's words. He writes, When the song of the angel is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. Dear ones, Christmas is so much more than just one day in December. Instead, it becomes the basis of our work, which takes place in the world the rest of our days. Christmas doesn't end the morning after. And Christmas doesn't end with Epiphany or Lent or even with Easter. For Christmas is God's continuing gift of his presence with us. And just as God sent Jesus filled with his light and love to be his presence in the world, today he is sending us. Now, don't get me wrong. Our Christmas Eve story that we retell year after year, it is extraordinarily precious and wonderful. But... If we never see anything more than a little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger, we have missed the big picture. You see, at Christmas, we come to the manger to embrace the story, not 
just as a once a year tradition, but as a call upon our lives. This story is to become our story and our witness and our song. Not just on Christmas Day, but on the morning after and the morning after that and the morning after that. Oh, may God bless not just the hearing and not just the believing, but the actual living of this holy word. Amen. Would you join us as we sing our final hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain. <coughs> in that light, that love that we received on Christmas Eve. Let us, let our lives, let our words, let our deeds be witness to that light. Amen. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain.